Hello students, myself, Mrs. Shilpa Bhavishi. I will be teaching you science this year. Today, we will start with the first chapter of our syllabus, Plants Increasing the Number. Plants Increasing the Number Let's talk about the uses of plants. The first use that comes to our mind is food. Plants provide food to all the other organisms on the earth. They are also called as the producers. The next use is that they supply us with life-giving oxygen. Oxygen is the gas that we breathe in and is required for most of the activities in our body. These plants provide us with fresh air which, in, which includes oxygen. The next use is reducing soil erosion. Now what does this term soil erosion mean? Soil has the quality of growing plants also known as fertility. Many a times due to air also called as wind, water and certain other agents this soil gets removed from the top due to which soil can, the plants cannot grow well. The roots of these plants hold the soil and stop it from getting reduced, uh, getting eroded. This is called soil erosion. The next function or use of the plant is to maintain the temperature on the earth and keeping it cool. Children, you might have observed when you visit a hill station, the temperatures there are very low. You feel very, very fresh. The reason is the plants there Keep the atmosphere cool. The next use is absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide has a property of absorbing heat from the sun and retaining it for long time. If the quantity of carbon dioxide would be higher in the atmosphere, the place would get really hot. These plants absorb carbon dioxide while they breathe in and maintain the balance of these gases on the earth. Plants also provide us with many other products like wood, fiber, gum, rubber, medicinal herbs like tulsi, ginger, garlic, tea and coffee. These are few uses of plants. If any other use comes to your mind, you may jot it down and tell me when we meet in the class. Moving to the parts of a plant. Plant is basically divided in two major parts, a shoot and a root. The physically seen part on the earth's surface is a shoot, which comprises of a flower, leaf, fruit and stem. At the same time, the portion which grows below the ground that's the root. The root system comprises of the roots. Moving to the function of each part of the plant. Flower, as we know, is a reproductive part of the plant. Leaf performs a very important function that is photosynthesis, a process through which plants prepare their food. Leaf is thus also called kitchen of the plant. A fruit, which is a pulpy, fleshy part of the plant and which protects the seeds. Most of the fruits are edible. The last part of the shoot system is the stem, which holds all these parts like the fruit, leaf and flower. It also works as a joining area between the root and the other parts. The root, which lies below the ground, absorbs water and minerals from the soil and also anchors the plant, means holds the plant straight and stiff in the soil. These are the parts of a plant. Now we are going to study about how do these plants grow. Normally, when we think of growing a plant, the part that comes to our mind is a seed. 
This year, we'll be learning about parts of a seed. Children, just as our human body is made up of parts, so is a seed also made up of many parts. The major parts of a seed are testa, also called as a seed coat. Testa is a scientific name, but seed coat we call it for our understanding. The next part, the white part, which is which is seen, is the cotyledon. This cotyledon provides food to the embryo or the baby plant which lies inside the seed. Then comes two important parts which form the embryo, the plumule and the radical. These plumule and the radical together make up the embryo of the plant. Plumule grows as a shoot of the plant while radical forms the root of the plant. Cotyledons as said provide food for the plant till the leaves grow. Once the leaves grow they start preparing the food for the plant. And testa or the seed coat as said is the outer layer or outer covering of the seed which pro protects the seed from any kind of injury or drying out. Let's understand these parts better. A seed is surrounded by an outer covering which is also called the seed coat or the testa and as said it protects seed from injury or drying up. Now children if you observe a seed you will find a mark or a dark patch small patch on the seed that is the hilum. It is the point at which the seed is attached to the fruit. It allows air, water and minerals to enter the seed and help in germination. Moving further, the seed leaves or the cotyledons store the food for the embryo and help it grow. Embryo, as the word says, grows into a new plant. It is made up of two parts, namely the plumule and the radical. Now, let's study the types of seed. A dicot seed and a monocot seed. Based on the number of cotyledons, the seeds are divided into these two types. Dicot, as the word says, di means two, cot means cotyledon. A seed having two cotyledons is called as a dicot seed. Monocot. The word mono means one or single. Cot means cotyledon. The seed having one cotyledon is said to be a monocot seed. Let's see the diagram and understand it better. As you can see children, a dicot seed can be divided into two equal halves. You can separate the cotyledons very easily. You can see in the diagram that the two cotyledons are very clearly seen here. At the same time, you can also see the seed coat and the embryo which is attached to the cotyledons. While in the monocot seed, it has a single cotyledon and embryo as well as the seed coat. An example, an easy example of a dicot seed is a bean seed. Any of the bean seed, if you will observe at home, will be having two cotyledons. The sweet portion that we eat in a seed is a cotyledon. At the same time, a corn is having a single cotyledon, is a, is a monocot seed. Now, let's do one thing. Today, we have learned about the plant the parts of a plant, their functions, parts of a seed and the types of seed. For your practice, I would request you to do the following work and then in the next class of ours, we will again discuss it. Let's practice. Draw and label the structure of a plant seed. You are supposed to draw the plant seed, label it as well.
The next work for you is write four examples of monocot and dicot seed. Since you are at home, you can just check with your mother in the kitchen and name four monocot seeds and four dicot seeds. For any confusions you have, you may go through the video again and revise it. Thank you.